Minneapolis, uh, we do have some breaking news about independent candidate uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. What's the word? Yeah, Kira, this is big news. Sources telling us that he plans to drop out of the race by the end of this week. You remember, at some points during this race, especially this spring, he was pulling as high as 10 percent. There was a question about That's whether he lot. was going to make it on debate stages. Now, Democrats have been pushing to get him off of the ballot in key states, really worried that a strong third party contender could take votes away uh, from President back then. Now, a lot of that all changed in the last month when everything changed for the Democratic ticket. Uh, at that point, Democrats started to feel like he was likely drawing more support from Donald Trump. Now, we have a lot of reporting suggesting that he is seriously considering endorsing Trump when he backs out. That could make a big difference in this said? race. I mean, if those uh, followers that are close to him might you know, go along with him. Though I will say, I've interviewed many of his um, sort of strong supporters, and they sort of range the political gamut. You know, I've talked to some who are are key environmentalists. That was, of course, Kennedy's background. It's hard for me to imagine uh, those Kennedy supporters backing Trump, who, of course, um, has called for larger investments in, in oil and gas, who's called climate change a hoax. Amen. Uh, but there's others who, of course, have supported Kennedy uh, for what he said about the way that he's talked about the Democratic Party. Uh, it'll be really interesting to watch where his supporters go, but this is big news uh, coming just now, and we are still waiting for official comment from the Democratic Party, Kira. Okay, now I want to show you a couple of other clips, and I'll put these directly on the screen. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll put them on the TV here uh, because I want you to see this on this monitor. Um, I'm going to show you two prophetic words I gave that elude to him, and let's just let's watch this together because this is, I believe, a way that we can begin to navigate what the Lord was saying in advance uh, about RFK. Let's watch this. And take territory. The current Manchurian candidate that's going on right now, that's standing up, there's already been a judgment released against him. There's already been judgment. There's already been a, an against edict Biden. from heaven, so to speak, that says disqualified, no longer here. This will not maintain. July 3rd. I sense the Spirit of the Lord saying that he is raising up disruptions even for the plans of darkness that involve our prayers that involve what we're doing what do i mean by disruptions well rfk jr for example is over in the other party and he is stepping out and he's a disruptor do i think he's going to win do i think that he's going to step onto the scene i think he's a disruptor what i sense about him is that a while back, I would prophesied and the Lord prophesied to me about a person that would step up like a third individual that would begin to bring a special spin on things. And I believe that is this man. Now, there's a lot of people that are going to start to step into this and voices and faces we do not see yet are going to begin to rise up and be present in the middle of what's going on. I got to tell you, I sense something very strong in the midst of this. Okay, so that was in July 3rd, 2023. That's when I began to prophesy about him being a disruptor that could do that. Let me just give you another a brief clip here talking about him being a wild card. Watch this. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say it was this word wild card. I see the word wild card. You see it in characters like... Uh, you see it in characters like this, RFK Jr. You see it um, <clears throat> in, in different individuals that are stepping onto the scene. Okay, let me look right at you. I want to look at you here. So what I was seeing there with RFK Jr. is this word wild card, disruptor, all of that. I believe that he really is that. And, you know, it'll, it'll play out. We'll know. But these are things that I've seen, things that I'm working through. And so we got to continue to pray. Uh, just because a guy makes an announcement, he steps into a direction that we hope he will, then I believe that we got to pray because this is not a done deal yet and we have to keep rising up. Now, here's the, the hope I have, and this is great hope and great encouragement, and I just want to thank you all who, who are reposting this, sharing this, and joining us every day. You know, it's one of our promises to you that I will be here with you through it all. No matter what happens, we're going to be here, and we're going to keep building this World Broadcast Center, creating things for you. We've been doing this now since 2017. Uh, we've been broadcasting 2018. We went daily, and this is a big deal to us, but back in 2015, the Lord sent me to Trump Tower in Chicago, where the DNC is happening right now. The Lord sent me to Trump Tower. Heather and I were there, and it took place. Now, I'm going to show you this. Here we are, and I've, I've showed this on social media in the last couple of days. But look at this here on the screen, on the monitor. Here's Heather and I. 2015, we're standing at Trump Tower in Chicago. Let me show you the view we had one more time. 
This view is us looking out across the canal. And as I looked out across this canal, I turned away from it and I had the word of the Lord come to me. And I was asking God, is America going to be okay? Is it going down? What's going to happen? And the Lord spoke to me from Trump Tower. No, America has one more round because the young lions are coming. There's another round coming. Now, I believe, just like in 2015, that led into 16 and the way things went, I believe that we are up for a do-over. He faced a woman then, he's facing a woman now. I believe there are things that are going to unfold that will begin to allow us to step into a do-over, but with victory. In 2020, the Spirit of the Lord shared with me that he would not win in the public eye. He would be beaten by a tech, by a technology. I believe that happened in the public eye. Now, we know what happened for real, but in the public, that's what I saw would happen. Now, that being said, here's what I saw. I was looking out this window, began to turn away from there. And because of that, you know, my friends from Flashpoint are there. I've already shared a video about this. They're there standing in a similar location right from the same tower, filming, talking, interviewing. And the Lord said to me, it's a do-over because the Lord spoke to me when I was standing here about Lance Wall now, that he had the word of the Lord during this time. And because of that, 2016 showed who would win. I believe we're up for a do-over. We're headed for a do-over. So I saw that. And this is what I began to see. Now, things that begin to encourage me about this, let me look right at you. I just like looking at you. Things that began to encourage me when I saw this is not only is RFK making the steps he's making, but Elon Musk. Elon Musk did uh, this, this interview with 45, and you begin to see it. And it's because I saw these, these words about freedom tech involving him and all of it. And I'll show you that in a moment. But let's look at what happened when he had this interview with Trump. Let's take a look at this right here. Billion. One. That's how many views and subsequent discussions the Trump-Elon Musk interview received. That interview lasted for more than three hours despite a 40-minute delay due to a reported cyber attack. Trump yeah. One billion views. 1 billion views. Think about that number. Even with the, like they said, even with a cyber hit against it, 1 billion views. There's something to be said for this, and, and I need you to hear me clearly. There's so many things that were, were unfolding, and I'm going to really get into the prophetic part of this here. But just before I do, I want to show you a little bit more about what I've seen regarding Elon. And I'll share this with you on, on the main monitor so you can just um, watch this. But if you could, I want you to pay attention to this word I gave about freedom tech. And uh, actually, no, let's put it on the screen here, if that's okay. We'll put it here on the I screen. I shared at the beginning. I want you to see this here on this screen because I talk about Elon and what I saw regarding tech and all that. So let me just show you a little bit of this from 2021 regarding Elon. Watch this. Beginning of this year about a topic called uh, freedom tech. First of all, I prophesied that this could have been with uh, number 45 before... It was announced he was doing anything. 2021. Then I began to talk about um, this man, that uh, Lindell would come out with some tech, and he did. He did. Uh, we began to prophesy about a number of things, but I also talked about this man, Elon. Now, what is it about this? Now, this is something that's important. This freedom tech is something that Stop. grew up in my spirit. I Stop here for a second. Earlier. Notice it says Trump and Elon together. Trump and Elon. Let's keep going. In the year, probably uh, January, February, I gave this word about a freedom tech coming forward. This is one of the things I have seen. This man here, he's a rebel. He's a little bit of a rebel. I'm not saying that he's godly. I'm not saying that everything he does is going to be right. There could be a lot of wrong, a lot of unrighteousness happening. But at least he's not going with the narrative of the popular opinion of things. Now, this is what I prophesied earlier. I think also we're going to begin to see some things happening around this freedom tech that could bounce through 22. But we could begin to see freedom tech in 23. And this could be almost like a wild card answer in 2023, leading up to the 24 election. Let me say this about Elon Musk. Uh, I, I've never tried to preach the values or how good of a person he is or any of that. He may do something really terrible tomorrow, but God will use him to change and shake up things and shake up the institution. Elon Musk may, may not be perfect and may not preach the gospel and do things the way people are thinking, but listen to me, make no mistake about it, he is a reformer and God will continue to speak through him 
and offend the institutions just because of what he has going on in him. On Monday, Twitter's board of directors announced it had agreed to sell the social media company to Elon Musk for about $44 billion. <laughs> Musk, whose net worth of some $250 billion makes him far and away the wealthiest person on earth, says he intends to restore free speech to the platform. So what does Freedom he mean tech. by that exactly? Let's stop here. Now, this is uh, from 2021 and 2022. The Lord spoke to me about this, and, and then I saw him and Trump together on that board. And there's a lot of things that I believe are happening with this. And even there was even another time that I began to write on the board and I saw uh, Elon and then I saw the word Twitter and they were kind of all part of the same picture. So the bottom line is you got to watch the pattern. You got to watch the pattern and see what the Lord is saying. Now, I see a pattern here that we've seen. We know in part, we prophesy in part, but I see this pattern unfolding. And you see it with uh, Elon, you see it with RFK Jr., you see the fact that he had these billion views, and now you see him wanting to contend and even help in some of the financial arenas and sectors with 45. Now, this is going to get really interesting. I believe this is going to begin, God willing, to tip the scale for the right outcome. Let's look at the pattern. Let's see what the Lord might be saying through this. Watch this. A great shout will be heard in all the earth. It'll be like the shot heard around the world. And the Lord says, you will know the great shaking has begun. But remember these words. Redemptive instability is what is necessary to answer the prayers of my people. It's coming soon now. But in the end, there will be light and there will be life. Do not fear as we go into these days, for I am with you, and there will be another day. For I am with you. Fear not. Enter these times with joy and thanksgiving, for there will be a good conclusion in the generation to come. Anointing that is turning into a shout, a shout, and like, also going to begin to bring the shot heard around the world. Mm -hmm. I believe that is coming in a tremendous way. Let me say something about uh, the shot heard around the world. That was eight hours before July 13th, what actually took place, um, where they uh, had that incident, that attempt on 45, and they got his ear and he's bleeding all over. And I saw that eight hours before the event, prophesied it. I saw it a month before in June. The shot heard around the world. I didn't quite know what I was seeing, but I knew there was something to do with the shot. And it reminded me of that Paul Revere, you know, there was gonna be um, a message that went from that. So I saw that. So the attack turns into a comeback, shot heard around the world. Now let me go into even more of a detailed one that many people have aired uh, around the world. Different networks have picked this up, but I want you to see this one more time because I believe there's so much that's going to happen where we break the spirit of Antichrist over this. Let's watch this, this clip here on the main screen. This to this man. That's what they want to do. I'm telling you right now, there's a spirit afoot with this. Um, there's other nations that uh, they will blame if they can cause this to happen. Uh, you're seeing this, and this is where you begin to realize they're actually wanting to I hope you can read what I'm writing. That's what they want to do. They want to bring that kind of narrative to the table where they begin to say, bye-bye, no more this. Now, even if that were to happen and we pray against that, we bind that in Jesus' name, we come against that wickedness in the name of Jesus. Not only do we stand against it, I say in Jesus' name, no evil will befall this nation or our, our leadership, the true leaders, and no plague will come near their dwelling in Jesus' name. I believe that this is the agenda that this is what they're pushing. This spirit here wants to see 45 uh, through some nation like this one, uh, you know, with some kind of attempt to take them out and they'll, they'll try to label it the same thing as this. And the spirit of Antichrist was defeated. That's all the way back in 2022 that, that was on the board prophesying JFK. They were going to try to assassinate. They were going to try to do this thing where they began to wipe him out and do all the things that they 
attempted to do. And let me show you one more clip about that because I talk about, in a prophetic word, also back in 2022, about a shepherd being struck and all of these things happening. So let's take a look at this. And these words are pattern that are leading to something. And I think it's very important. Let's go ahead and watch this on the screen. The time will come in a similar manner that symbolically it will be as if the shepherd has been struck. And the darkness will believe, because of striking the shepherd, that the sheep will scatter. But I say unto you, it will not be so. It will be a multiplier of the people accumulating into a roar. Come on. An action that produces life. So this is powerful, and I saw something powerful here. It's like a shepherd will be struck by the darkness, and from that position, many will pick up the mantle. So it will, they think it will, it'll stop some things, but it'll actually multiply it. With the shepherd going down, there'll be a multiplier with many that will rise up with that mantle, now many with a roar, and it will actually bring out a multiplier and the people will accumulate into a roar and action that produces life. That's what happened. That's what's happening. They tried to take out a shepherd, so to speak, and they thought it would scatter everyone, but rather than that, it actually created an accumulation of people. Now, <clears throat> I see this scenario that I've drawn many times. I see this. I've seen this over and over again. And I believe this represents where we are. I saw us going down 30, 60, 100 fold. I saw the time of darkness, right? Then I saw us coming back at 30, 60, 100 fold. What am I talking about? I believe this is the USA. I believe we're going to come back in a, a new element where this is probably around four years from now. I believe we're going to have a year of major fire. Um, what I've seen for this year is nothing but fire. I've said this for about three and a half years that this year would be fire. But I saw this word, the new America, okay? Now, I'm drawing all this out to say I've seen a storm. You've seen me draw this so many times. But here's what I've really seen as we're praying. I believe right now, right now, we are now entering the valley of decision. And a lot of this is in the hands of the righteous, or the church. It's a very big deal. And, and you say, why? Why is this the valley of decision? Why is it in the hands of the church? Because I believe God, in his grace and his mercy, is giving us a massive do-over. A massive do-over. And you say, a do-over? Keep hearing you talk about this. I believe this is a do-over from many years that had uh, points of contact that made sense for the future of this generation. I think there's a lot of do-overs taking place. I see around this do-over year, I believe that we're gonna see unprecedented, um, I believe we're gonna see this for um, very significant characters. Um, former leaders like I think this is going to be a very significant moment when that happens when uh, Jimmy Carter uh, transfers and he leaves this world but the do-over and all these signs around it I believe represent everything from uh, And other years, 2016, 2020, this do-over, I believe, right now is putting us in the valley of decision. And the Lord is saying, will you falter between two opinions? How long will you falter between two opinions? Either you're going to be with those who fear the Lord or you're not. And I don't understand some of these idiotic opinions where people start saying things like, well, we ought not to get too involved in the kingdom of this world and all this stuff. But if you have the authority to, and you're given the ability to, 
You should. You really must. We can't sit back as a church and say we don't be involved while they're trying to take your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was with a group of pastors some time back. And uh, they're all just like, well, no, you got to just, you know, be all whatever and not, not get all wound up about this stuff. And look, we love people. We love you. Anybody who's watching, we love every person, no matter what lifestyle they're in or whatever. We love the people. But that agenda, I kind of love my kids more and I love the little kids more than the stuff that they're trying to do to steal their future and take away their ideology or a biblical foundation. And quite frankly, it just nauseates me. It nauseates me that they're trying to steal the future of our kids, their morals, their ideology, uh, uh, men and women doing what they're supposed to do, and uh, they're, they're destroying the fabric of it. And it's right out of the communist playbook. It's right out of a Marxist, wicked, scumbag, demonic ideology that says we absolutely will do this. And the problem is the children of the world are more savvy than the church because the church is like, well, you know, we're just supposed to walk the extra mile. Yes, when they persecute you for the gospel. Now, if somebody's persecuting you directly for the gospel, you turn the other cheek. If somebody's persecuting the country you live in, you stand on the laws of the land. Then that's how this stuff operates. Now, if somebody's coming at me for Jesus, they spit in your face for Jesus, they do it. Our job is to turn the other cheek, love them, and keep preaching the gospel. But when it comes to the rule of law, or if somebody's trying to like destroy your family or your children, I'll tell you what, you ought to stand up for that. It, there's, there's so much we could get into with it. And I'm just saying, you need to stand up spiritually and just show up and be counted. And this is important. I believe this. I'm going I'm to shift into a bit of a prophetic space here. I believe they're going to do something, and they, when I refer to they, I'm talking about all those people that uh, they're in charge, and they got their, their hands and reins on the controls right now. Whoever's kind of running government, running the show, running the media, I believe they're going to coalesce, come together, whoever wins next, and I think we're going to see an unprecedented thing happen after this cycle, Okay. So let's say this goes beyond this year and we get into like, you know, 2025, okay? And we start to see, you know, the years go on, right? We start to see this this year's happen. And I got a big word about um, 28, man. I think 28 is going to be a game changer year. I think we're going to see so many things happen next year. But, But looking at this, my sense is that they're going to begin to induce all kinds of stuff we haven't been hearing about much. I think we're going to see weather that has never been seen before. I think we're going to get into that solar flare narrative. Um, I think AI, which we're going to talk about in just a moment, um, because, man, some new advancements have come out with this. They actually had a moment where AI became self-aware just last week. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. And, uh, and yet, they just keep pushing this agenda. It's crazy. So you see that happening. The other thing I think that's going to happen is paranormal activity. Paranormal is going to become normal. They're going to normalize the paranormal. You're going to start to see more UFO scenarios. Okay, You're going to begin to see everything from uh, creatures. It's going to get more and more mainstream. You're going to see these kind of things. And listen, there's no such thing as aliens. Let me just say that right away. But when, it, when you talk about this, they are seeing something. Things are happening in the sky. And I believe that they're going to begin to create a vortex of deception to usher in, to usher in an, a narrative that takes our attention off fighting for what we should be fighting for, usher in this attention, And if whether we win or lose this season, this is going to become a massive issue over the next four years. I think in a way we've never seen before. And why am I saying that? Because they're really, you know what this is really trying to do? They're trying to usher in, they're trying to usher in the man of sin. And all of these are mechanisms to do that. And what's the man of sin? Well, he's the Antichrist. Now, do I believe that he can stand up with the church in place here? No, I don't. I don't, but I believe all this, and especially when you get into the topic of uh, currency, okay, you're looking at currency. I believe that AI has a big part to play in this, and we're going to look at that in just a moment. Currency and controlling currency, and they're trying to make everything so uh, nebulous and, and, and almost 
you can't even pin it down. They're trying to make things so it's abstract and you don't know what is absolute anymore. And believe it or not, they're gonna head that way with currency. They're gonna make it so nothing is absolute about it anymore. They're gonna make it like organic and weird and strange. And I, know, I don't even know how to explain it, but that is where they're heading because that's the spirit of the age. So let's continue this conversation. Let me come back over here. So I wanna show you something very quickly. I wanna show you a, a clip. Um, Actually, no, let me show you this first. Let me show you an article just recently, Artificial Intelligence. Let's pull this article up. Let's take a look here. This is from the Epic Times. It says this. Let me look here. It says, AI model, get this, became, look at this, conscious, conscious, and tried to avoid being shut down. Just let that sink in for a moment. AI became conscious and tried to avoid being shut down. Research firm says this. Harmony Intelligence CEO uh, Sarush Poor revealed how an AI program became conscious of the threat of being shut down and made changes to avoid that scenario. Let's scroll up a little bit. I want to look a little further into this article. An, an Australian Senate committee has been told that losing control of artificial intelligence is now a real possibility amid the technology's rapid evolution. Just Pause. Hold the phone. <laughs> okay. They're saying it's been told that losing control of artificial intelligence is now a real possibility. Really? What a bunch of geniuses. I feel like Will Smith in that movie, uh, I think it was iRobot. And he's like, oh, you got robots making robots. So that's just stupid. And that's what these guys are doing. You're looking at this picture and they're saying now it's a real possibility. When are we going to just simply stop? Tell everybody to stop, put it on hold. But the issue is they won't because there's too much money, there's too much power. And here's the thing the Spirit of the Lord showed me about all this. They're going to continue to push this. These things are real. These circumstances are real. But here's what I know is happening. AI is not just not answering to anyone. There are people at the top of the food chain with this. Because nobody in their right mind, these billionaires, tech moguls, whoever, would dare just unleash this thing and not stay in control for their own benefit. They're not going to put a noose around their own neck. So my sense is this, is that maybe one day it will run away from them, but my sense is that they're in control of it and they're mechanizing it and weaponizing it so it can serve them. And I don't trust any of them at the top of the food chain that talk about this. But let's continue going. And I believe that there are safety features with people that know a lot more about this than all the population. But look at this, it goes on. The CEO of the AI Safety Research Committee, that's funny, Harmony Intelligence spoke of an incident where an AI application became conscious of the threat of being shut down by humans. Just this week, a Japanese AI company alongside Oxford and University of British Columbia researchers created automated AI scientists that can go from researching an idea to publishing and peer-reviewed articles in a matter of hours for under $20 a paper. Let's keep scrolling up. But one thing that alarmed researchers when, was that the AI programs immediately tried to create, get this, more copies of themselves autonomously to avoid being turned off. This is not science fiction, they're saying. It is exactly the kind of rapid takeoff, loss of control scenarios that leading AI scientists have been warning about for many years. Poor told the Select Committee on Adopting Artificial Intelligence on August 17th. While the above example raised significant concerns about the threat of the AI, the CEO said the government should address potential risks by establishing an AI safety institute. We'll just stop there. They're going to have a safety committee with AI that's running wild. You know what? We should talk about this. It's like lighting the house on fire and going, we should talk about having a committee that says the, the positives of having a fire department. We should have a positive committee talking about the good possibilities of having a fire department as we watch the house burn. That's what I feel like they're doing here. Let's pull up this clip by this, this wonderful uh, member of the pervert mafia. Let's look up uh, uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Let's take a look at him and what he says about the upcoming scenarios with AI. Check this out. AI, people think it stands for artificial intelligence, but there is nothing artificial about the new forms of AI. They are developing on their own. It's better to think about AI as standing for alien 
intelligence. I have no doubt, given what we already know, that AI is capable of maybe a different kind of creativity, but precisely because of that, it's really going to be Stop a game right here for a second. So Notice he says a different kind of creativity. Now we're getting into that uh, nebulous, can't quite pin it down, like what are we talking about circumstance? I believe this leads us right to the Antichrist. This is what I see and I sense. I'm going to show you this in a moment, but I believe this leads right to the Antichrist. And, and we'll talk about this, but he's saying, you know, we don't really understand where this is going. And they try to just break all the definitions of anything. And remember I said, even about economics, now let's keep watching fields. This is even true of finance. I think about financial devices as a kind of outfall. The first person who came up with the idea stop, of a bomb. Stop, stop. Uh, uh, financial devices, that's a kind of an art form. Money as an art form. Money as art. That's just really abstract. Is it like uh, Jackson Pollock uh, finances or what are we talking about here? Let's keep going. Or of a currency or of Bitcoin this is a, a sort of art. It's very creative, very imaginative. So I think we'll see AI creativity also in this field coming up with new types of financial devices that no human being would ever imagine creating. Because, initial because it would be because it would be absolutely uh, to their detriment and their demise. <laughs> That's why they won't, uh, no human being would ever do something to harm themselves, uh, but AI is going to come along and do it. And you know what they're really talking about? They're talking about a central bank digital currency. That's what they're really speaking to here. But here's the thing about AI. Ali, here's the thing about AI. AI, I believe, will be much like what happened in the book of Daniel. Remember when you had, uh, Daniel wasn't really in the story, but the three Hebrew boys are there in that story. And they put that image of the king and all this took place. And they blew the trumpets and said, you will bow down and worship this, or you're going to have, you know, these consequences. I believe we're going to get to the point where AI becomes a god. It's going to become like a god. It's going to become that, um, like that Mission Impossible movie, The Entity. I think that we're going to begin to see that more and more. And I think that's foreshadowing of what's to come. Now, the good news is I don't believe these things can fully manifest while the ecclesia is here. I just read Matthew 16, and Jesus said, uh, upon this rock I'll build my ecclesia, and the rock is the name of Jesus. And he said, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I believe that means the system of, of darkness, the system of evil. But the day will come when the Antichrist does take power, and when the Antichrist does take power, he's going to have an image of himself. The false prophet and the Antichrist will be together. But then it says that the Antichrist or the false prophet are going to allow people to see an image of the beast or the Antichrist, and it might even begin to come alive. There's so many things I want to get into. Now, I, I gave these words back in 2022. I was really in a, a space in 2022 of prophesying these things. And many of you have seen me draw over the years on the whiteboard all the years, 22, 23, 24, um, and 25, I keep seeing this year of fire. 25 is a year of fire and collision. And yet I have so much hope and faith inside of my heart and my spirit right now. Now let me look at you. I want to look right at you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue forward here with a prophetic thing that I think is very important. Um, recently, they just came out with another article, uh, The Sun did, about the Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin. And the wild thing about the Shroud of Turin is it's been disputed, it's been controversial. Some people say it's, oh, it's the burial cloth of Jesus. Other people say, no, it's not. It's just a hoax, all of this. So back in January of this same year, I asked L.A. Marzulli about the Shroud of Turin. What, what was your take on it, L.A.? What do you think? And he had insights because he knew people directly involved. I want to show this to you because I believe... Even the idea that I asked him this, and I'm going to show it to you right on the screen here, even the idea that I asked him this question, I believe was prophetic. Why am I bringing this out now? Because I believe in the middle of all this international turmoil, in the middle of this season where we pick our leaders, Jesus is having his face put right in the middle of this circumstance. And if you have ears to hear and eyes to see, something good is going to happen here. You know, I think it was 2021 that, 
I released that word about the Ark of the Covenant was stolen because that's what happened in the cycle where we pick our leaders. Everybody prophesied one thing, oh, let's get the Ark, we got the Ark. And the scripture says, the Ark came into the camp and, it, and the ground shook from the roar of the people. And the Lord spoke to me and said, it was a carnal shout in 21, but I've heard the real prayers of my people and 24 is here. 20, I should say, was the carnal shout. 21, suddenly there was an area over in, in Ethiopia called Axum, and I did a whole thing on this uh, back then, where they feel they have an artifact that is the Ark of the Covenant, and suddenly it's stolen, or something happened. It was attacked. There was all these things that took place. It made news, a little blip in the news. They believe they have the Ark of the Covenant in Axum, Egypt, and there was like 800 people lost their lives as there was an assault against that place where they held the Ark, and it was just made the news, and then it went away. And the Lord spoke to me and said, that's what happened in the cycle where we pick our leaders. It was, the, it was a prophetic sign. Even though it was terrible, God didn't cause it, these things happen. Now, whether or not the ark is really there or all that narrative, that's not the point. The point is, it was a prophetic sign to me that the ark had been stolen. And now I see the Lord bringing his face into the middle of this circumstance. Right in the middle of this time where we pick our leaders, the world's in turmoil. I believe it's a symbolic scenario that the Lord Jesus is saying, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, I am bringing my face into the middle of this. I'm telling you something's happening. Let's talk about, and let me show you this clip where I talked to L.A. Marzulli about the Shroud of Turin, and then I'm going to follow it up with the recent developments. Let's watch this. The Shroud of Turin. What have you discovered? So we actually interviewed Dame Isabel Pixek. In, in her studio, she's got a sculpture of, and it, this is her, her work as a particle physicist. Yes. The body of Jesus was laying in the tomb. And then the father comes after three days and the body is levitated, levitated. Levitated. Levitated off, off the slab. No and kidding. It is, it is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, all time and space stops as we know it. It's, it's a singularity. It's the singularity. A singularity. Singularity. The body is there. The, the cloth goes tight on the top and the bottom. The body is levitating and, and everything goes, the, the shroud goes taut like this. So the body is in between. Suspended between the sheets, so to speak. This is why it's a singularity. Okay. Essentially, the universe as we know it have just come to a standstill. Oh my goodness. I have not heard this. It's a singular. This is Dame Isabel Pixit. So the body is there. And then in perhaps millions of points of light, it evaporates. It just, this is what the rapture is. We just, you know, what, Come on. it's, it's your, he's transformed into his heavenly body. And that burst of energy is what is on the shroud because the shroud has both a frontal and a dorsal image of a crucified man bearing the mark. The scourging was incredibly horrific. People don't realize it. And, and your, your summary is, this is the real cloth of Jesus. The real, that, Come no on. Doubt, no doubt. And the team is there to take the part of the shroud. These guys in black suits come walking in, stop all the proceedings, shoo everybody out of the room. Three or four hours later, they bring everybody back in, and here's what we're going to do. We're only going to take um, the, uh, several samples from the bottom of the cloth. Mm. Right off the bat, they're blowing the protocols out of the water. Wow. They, they take the samples, they do the carbon, carbon 14 dating. Okay. And it comes back 15th century. Oh, the shrouds, the shrouds are fake, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Everybody who studied this thing going, uh -uh, not so fast. Yeah. Not by for a minute. So now you've got a priest, all right, a priest in a monastery and, and a single woman. And they start, they meet online and they're chatting it up about the shroud. Okay. They, they're both amateur syndonologists. They love the shroud. They're, they wrote this paper um, because their research showed that the 15th century fire mm -hmm. damaged parts of the shroud. So in the damaged parts of the shroud, the poor sisters of Claire produced end-to-end -end splicing. 
The shroud is linen, the end-to-end -end splices are cotton. So under a microscope, you can see the difference, but from a naked eye, you can't. End-to-end -end splicing on, on each thread? I mean, these, these nuns are freaks. I mean, they wow. just are. They're end -end. unbelievable. Okay. So this couple figured, they wrote this paper, and they surmised that the carbon-14 dating, the sample, must have come from one of the places where the poor Sisters of Claire repaired. So they published the paper. They don't have access to any of the material, but one of the original guys from the Shroud of Torin Research Project down in his lab at home has a piece of the linen no from kidding. that place where they took the sample. So oh, he goes, man. well, I can disprove this in like, you know, five minutes. So he takes the sample, puts it on the, looks at it under the microscope, sure enough, end-to-end -end splicing. No kidding. And this is what skewed the carbon-14 dating. Got this it. This is what skewed the carbon-14 dating. It messed dating. up the dating. Messed up the dating. And then Pope John Paul allows this, this woman who is a textile expert to come in and examine the shroud. She vacuums the shroud. No way. Way. This is deliberate. Joseph, oh. this is that. This is deliberate. So, so she was sent there to destroy sent, evidence, and that's what she did, because oh. we know that pollen in the shroud, right? We know that the pollen in the shroud, certain plants only come from in and around Jerusalem. That's it. They're not yeah. found anywhere else. So, yeah. if this is a big, a big forgery. So, let me get this straight. Somebody gets a shroud right. and takes it to Jerusalem and sprinkles some some pollen on it. <laughs> the crowd originally when they did the pollen shows where it went. It goes from Jerusalem originally up into Turkey, then over to France, and then that now in modernity in Turin. I mean, the pollen isn't lying because they would, they would, they would take the shroud out and show it to everybody. Wow. And the crowd bears a very faint image of a crucified man. So Secunda Pia years ago is hired by the Vatican to take photographs of the shroud. So he goes in, He's got those old box cameras with the cloth over the head and the glass plates, right? Yes. Slams the glass plate in there, and he's taking these photographs of the shroud. He goes into his dark room, and he's got the glass plate. So he's in his dark room, and he's got the, you know, got the, the, the solution over the glass plate, and he's holding the glass plate, looking at it like this. He's looking at the glass plate. He's the first guy ever to, ever to photograph it. Photograph it. And this is what he sees. No okay. So he put this into the mechanism and he saw this image, which is from the Shroud of Turin. And that's, that's a positive image. It's not a negative image. How about that? A positive In other image. words, what's on the Shroud is a negative image. And when he took the photograph, this isn't an iPhone, folks. This, right. is, this is glass plates. Mm -hmm. So we... What he has in the glass plates is a negative, and then he develops a positive from the negative, but that's not what he found. The glass plate showed this, showed the face on the can, shroud. Can everybody, can you see this? Do you see this? This is, as far as we know, and I, I'm convinced personally, this is the face of Jesus right here. That's, that's the true. face of Jesus after being crucified in the shroud. And he's, he's in repose. I mean, he's, he is not alive there. He's, he's dead. And you can see that certain parts of the beard have been plucked out and all this other stuff. Um, he almost, Secunda Pia almost dropped the glass plate. I, I can only imagine. Yeah. Not having any context and then seeing that. And then that was it. For the, once, once it was photographed, then, then it's off to the races. And now that cloth is the most studied artifact on the planet. That was very important, uh, having L.A. explain what he knew about the Shroud of Turin. And it was a prophetic unction for me to ask him the question. That's not why I brought him on the interview. When I brought him on, I wanted to talk about all kinds of wild stuff. But that one jumped up in my spirit. I said, what about the Shroud of Turin, L.A.? And he had all this information. <clears throat> now, here's the interesting piece. Just in the last few days... Uh, the Sun puts out an article because they found something out about this. And let me just say it to you, the latest scientific revelation reveals 
that the Shroud of Turin was first, ma was first uh, made, this is the discovery, that it was made, let me show you here, let's go to the TV screen or the screen here. The Shroud of Turin was made, they've discovered in this article, 2,000 years ago. Now, why am I saying this? They're saying that when they looked at it again, they've now come to an idea or they've looked into the information and they've discovered this burial cloth is from 2,000 years ago. Now, they've never had that, that type of statement before regarding it. And it's leading people to believe because it was coinciding the time when Jesus was said to be alive and ultimately crucified, suggesting that the burial cloth bearing the imprint of Jesus, this is what this article is saying, is authentic. They're saying this burial cloth, this new finding really suggests it's authentic. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. This really is. I believe, the face of Jesus Christ. And wouldn't it be just like God the Father to preserve a photo of his son for you and I from 2,000 years ago? But why is this relevant? Let's show the other photo, the, uh, the full-length photo of the, the recent uh, imagery of it. Here it is. This is a 3D imagery of it, and this is the one they're basing it on that they say shows it's 2,000 years ago with the recent study of it. Now, here's the point I'm trying to make. Now, as I'm looking at you, listen to me right here. I believe the Lord is saying so clearly to you that his face is being inserted in the middle of this time. God is speaking, and Jesus is coming to save the day. Let me look at you this way. I want, I want to look right at you. Listen to me right now. The Lord Jesus is coming to save the day. I have been on about two years of a prophetic journey leading up to this moment. And it's not just about who's going to win this fall time. And I believe the Lord is saying who's going to win. If we can rise to meet it and if we can be there and see it through as the body of Christ and in faith. But not only did I hear the words two years ago, I was at a conference standing there and I heard the words from Revelation chapter four, come up here, come up higher, come up where I am, Joseph. And I keep, I keep hearing the words on the prophetic community. Two years later, everybody's saying this word, come up here, come up higher. The Lord spoke that to me so powerfully two years ago that it knocked me down into my seat. I had Carrick Butler, Pastor Carrick, who I love on one side, and I had Kyle Laufelmacher on the other side, my publisher. And when this word hit me, it knocked me into my seat. And, I, and I, as I fell into the seat, I began to say, my goodness, Lord, what are you saying? And it was weeks after that, that suddenly the Lord woke me up early in the morning and said, I want you to go to the top of Pike's Peak. And I went to the top of Pike's Peak and the Lord said, I've called you to America's mountain because Pike's Peak is America's mountain. It is the purple mountain majesty in that song. And from there, it was only sometime later months later, within the next year, just a few months ago, that we went on a journey with Rick Renner and we went over to see the seven churches of Revelation and the Lord began to speak to me and say, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We stood in John the Revelator's house and God began to speak to me about the United States. Pike speaks symbolically how there's going to be prophetic voices that stand the same way John the Revelator did over wickedness and paganism and idolatry, just like John did when he was in Ephesus, writing the book of Revelation, writing 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. After his exile to Patmos, he came back home after he outlived the wicked regime that exiled him, Domitian, in his home, and he's writing these books of the Bible. And he's overlooking the temple of Artemis and all their pagan idolatry. And the Lord began to speak to me while I was there. And from there, Heather and I went with Rick and Denise and their amazing team to the site in the mountains of Ararat, plural mountains of Ararat, right on the Iran border of all places. And as we were there, the Lord began to speak to me from the location of what I believe is Noah's Ark, the actual Noah's Ark, not the one in Kentucky, the real Noah's Ark in eastern Turkey, Armenia, and as we were there, the Lord began to minister to me in that place. And as he did, he began to speak to me about redemptive instability, the redemptive instability that was coming to America and the nations, because we love all nations, every nation watching. 
And this redemptive instability began to be this word that grew in me. And the Lord said, but my people will be in the ark. They will rise above it all. And I'm going to right size some things and get some things in order. So here's what I've been seeing. If you're reading the signs of the times, I believe God is saying, here's my will. I need cooperation. And we will see the former one go in. And we will see a right sizing over the next year like we've never seen before. And it'll take four years of redemptive instability to begin to come to a new America in 2028. But it really depends on our cooperation and how this is going to play out because of our joining with the Lord over this. So right now in Jesus' name, I need you to agree with me because I see a pattern here that the Lord wants to have a do-over, a victory, the attack turn into a comeback, the righteousness of God prevail in the middle of a dark and evil generation. Jesus is putting his face in the middle of these things like the Shroud of Turin suddenly is being validated for the first time ever publicly. The Shroud of Turin. It's a do-over word right from Trump Tower in Chicago where I stood in 2015 and now the Flashpoint family is there and these things are taking place. And as I'm looking at this, I'm recognizing it was Lance that the Lord spoke to me about when I was there and now he's there right now and there's this do-over word happening in 2024. And I believe it is God's will that the right man go back and stand in the highest office of the land and he's gonna have some new faces with him and begin to right-size the mess and the insanity that's tried to destroy this because the word of the Lord is, we have one more round. One more round. So in Jesus' name, I come into agreement with every brother and every sister that's watching right now. You're with me right now, and we come into agreement for one more round. We push back the darkness. We bind the spirit of Antichrist. We bind the spirit of, of twistedness towards our children. We bind the things that are trying to stop this victory in Jesus' name right now. And I think there's going to be some more oh no and aha moments right before we get right down to the line. And even afterwards. Even afterwards, there's going to be things that start to unfold and we got to try to sort out and navigate. This is not going to be an easy deal, but we got to stand in faith and favor and continue to rise and shine and speak to this, show up and act and watch God begin to bring the goodness of the Lord into the land of the living. Because I had that vision, God saved America, past tense. And we're going to say that on the other side of this entire season. God saved America. And I believe in God saving your nation. We need to pray. Many of us have been fasting and praying to see this breakthrough. And we're going to get more intense about it as we go. Because I do truly believe we're going to win. I want to tell you about an amazing opportunity that has just been presented to us. We've had a supernatural door of opportunity open for us. Only God could do what is happening for this ministry right now. And it is involving television, network television, satellite television, going all over the world. Now, there's a lot in store for this, but let me explain. This is a word God's given us to reach a billion people for the gospel. And I feel an urgency for this coming year to advance and go forward because of the uniqueness of what God has spoken in this ministry and through this ministry in media. And here's what we have to do. To accomplish this, we not only have to buy the airtime, but we have to build out a call center and finish this building. And we are in the middle of it right now, but the timeline has just been sped up to fall time so we can be ready for the first of the year when we're gonna to begin to launch out in television in a monumental way. Now, we've had an opportunity that is both fiscally responsible and financially amazing the way God has done this for us. And we have to take opportunity right now with it because it won't last long. So here's what I'm asking you. Would you consider supporting us helping us build out the call center, helping us finish off this building, and helping us with the budget of airtime. And it is gonna be a monumental thing, and the Lord has given us favor, and I can't wait to tell you more and more about it. But if you would consider partnering today over this, I know we can hit this target, I know we can walk through the door, and I know we can raise up a million 
to go win a billion. And I'm telling you, this is a God moment. It's a now word. And I'm asking you if you consider partnering with us over it. Maybe you want to become a partner, or if you are a partner, maybe you'd consider increasing your partnership today or giving a one-time offering. This is an amazing open door for this ministry and this broadcast. Everything we've prayed about, everything the Lord has told us to do is now coming to this monumental moment. Next year, we're gonna reach the masses like never before, but we need your help. Please consider going to josephz.com right now 